In order for us to upload images, we need to do some changes on some existing areas of our code. We'll start by adding the file upload field on our forms file. So open it and add the following image field on post form. The WT form file field renders a file upload dialog on the form, where you can select a file from your computer and send it along with the rest of the data to the server. File field has a validator called file allowed, where we can define the file types we allow on the server. So in this case, we're allowing only JPEG and PNG image file types. Make sure to add the file field in the imports on line 2. And the file allowed validator on line 4. Save the file and now open the post HTML block template. We'll add the actual image element at the beginning of the field list on the form. Save the file and now go to your blog post page to check out the image element there. Of course, selecting an image here won't do anything just yet, as we need to implement this on the database model. So let's do that next. Open the blog models file. Right underneath the body column, let's add the following. What we're going to do is to store the image name and not the actual binary file of the image on the database. MySQL also allows the storage of binary files, but I found this to be cumbersome for storing images for something like a block platform. I'd rather store the file itself on a server that can then serve the image statically than overload the application server to fetch this from the database. So why 36 characters in length? We're going to use a randomly generated hash with a library called UUID that generates strings of 36 characters. I'll explain a bit more why in a bit. Now add the image property on the init method. Save the file. Since we modified the database model, we need to do a migration. So on the terminal, run the migrate command. Next, we'll check that the new migration file looks OK. This looks good. For the upgrade, it adds the image string column on the post table. And if we downgrade, it deletes that column. Now we'll apply these changes to the database. So do flask db upgrade. Perfect. Hope you're getting the hang of migrations. OK, time to do the actual image processing on the block views controller. So open the file. Right underneath the validate on submit function, add the following. We begin by creating an empty image ID variable. If the post has no image, the field will be stored as null. We then check if there's an image being sent through the form by checking if there's an image field with data in it. If the user didn't post any image, form.image still exists, but the data property will be empty. We then assign the F variable to the contents of the form image data. Next, we generate a random ID for the image using the UUID library. This library generates a random string that is suitable for unique IDs and that will always have a length of 36 characters, like I mentioned earlier. So why not use the name of the original file? The problem is that the file name might have weird characters or spaces that can break the HTML rendering and we don't really get anything valuable storing the original name of the file. Continuing with the code, we then create a file name with the image ID plus the extension PNG, since we will be converting all image types to the PNG format. We then create a file path where we will save the file, which is a combination of the blog post images path setting we had and the file name. We use the os.path.join library since we want to keep compatibility with Windows and Unix-based folder structures. Finally, using the Python image library, we open the file data and save it in the path, convert it to the PNG format. We're almost done, but we want to address another piece of the image puzzle. When users upload images, they can have different sizes and proportions, and we want to somewhat unify the image dimensions so that our post layout is consistent. For that, I created an image resizing function that I just copy and paste every time I need this functionality. So at the end of the file, put the following code. 
What this function does is that it requires the image's file path, the unique ID, the size in pixels of the width we want, and an extension to denote the different size in the file name. Using a bit of math, we detect the image's width and then resize it using the width size we want, keeping the height proportional, so that we don't deform the aspect of the image. Finally, we save the file with the extension passed to the function. With this in place, go ahead and add the following under the form image conditional we wrote earlier. So we'll save a large version of the image for the article template and a small version for the index template. We need to add the image field to the model. On top of the file, add the imports that we need. And the blog post images path constant from settings. We're done with the view, so go ahead and save the file. Before we create our first post with an image, we need to add the image to the article and the index template. On the article template, add the following in line 15. Now open the index template and add this on line 30. We're essentially dividing the article into two columns. On the left, we'll have the article and on the right, the image, if we have one. Save the file. You need to create the local folder where we upload the images, so go ahead and create it. In my case, I created static images uploads folder. Now go ahead and create a post with an image. When you press submit, you should be taken to the article view where the image is displayed. And if you go back to the home page, you should see your first post with an image. Now go check the static images uploads folder. You will see the three images there with their UUID file names. One is the original image, and the other two are the resized versions. Try uploading a few images with different ratios to see how they are resized. 